to the Jewish world. That's why it was written early. To show to the Jewish world, the Old Testament world, that Jesus was greater than Moses. That he was greater than the law. That is validated by Matthew 5, 17 and 18. Okay? Jesus spoke these words uh, right in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount. This is what he said. He had a tremendous audience around him, and here's what he said. Don't think that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. What's he talking about? He's talking about the Old Testament. I have not come to destroy, but I have come to fulfill. For verily or surely I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle in no wise shall pass from the law till all be fulfilled. All right, now you and I as Gentile believers, we understand that Jesus is the fulfillment of that. But if you were talking to somebody of another religion, how would you argue that? How would you prevent, how would you uh, portray Jesus as the fulfillment of the law? All right, there's four ways. And this is what the lesson is tonight. This is what the lesson is all about. The four ways that Jesus fulfills the law of the Old Testament. Okay? The first is in the principle of the law. The principle of the Old Testament. What does that mean? It means that Jesus was a good Jew, okay? He went to the temple, he went with his family, okay? He practiced all the customs, even the time that he was born, he was circumcised. I don't guess he had a lot to, to do about saying anything about it because he couldn't talk. But all the way through his life, even to the last supper that he took was a Jewish practice, okay? So Jesus practiced all the principles of the Old Testament, okay? In that sense, he was fulfilling the principles of the law. But not only that, he fulfilled the prophecies of the law, okay? Now, the Jews just believe, just like you and I do, that the fall of man happened. They believe, every good Jew believes that the fall of man happened, and they believe the curse of the serpent is real, and that Adam and Eve took the apple and they did sin, okay? So they believe in the curse, but the great question is how do you undo the curse? How can the curse be trumped or overcome? Well, the only way, and Jesus preached this, the New Testament preached it also, that although the Jews kept holding on to their way, the only way to undo the curse is through redemption, okay? Redemption. All you have to do to understand this and understand that Jesus was the fulfillment of this law, or prophecy of this law, is go back to Genesis 3.15. I'm not going to run back there. I'm just going to quote it, okay? Genesis. He was talking to the serpent. 3.15. God was talking to the serpent, and he said this. He shall, or you shall bruise his heel, and he shall bruise your head. Now, you heard me quote that many times. But what happened is the heel of Jesus was bruised at Calvary, but the head of the serpent was crushed at Calvary and through the resurrection of Christ. So that prophecy meant that Jesus fulfilled that prophecy. He was the Messiah, and so Matthew 5, 17 is true. He fulfilled the prophetic, prophetic views of the law. Now, always remember this. Every good Jew, just like every good Christian, believes in the coming Messiah. We believe that Jesus is coming back. The only difference is that the Jew is looking for him the first time. Okay? They believe at that time that God's redemptive plan will come into place, and at that time, sin will be done away with, and at that time, Jesus will, will win the battle of redemption. Okay? Just like the two mountain peaks I showed you. One was the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ. They didn't see the suffering. But then the other one, they saw, uh, the other one is the second coming of Jesus. But they never saw the church age. They never saw the Gentiles and you and I coming to the Lord Jesus Christ. So, in essence, they believe in the coming of the Messiah that is yet to appear, but one day he will. And when he does, he will rise all along. Okay? 
Now, even the disciples didn't understand this because they were good Jews. And so time after time, especially in the discourse in Matthew 24, they said, Jesus, are you going to now restore your kingdom? See, a misunderstanding. Well, voila, the king's here. He's going to set up shop. That's why the, the, the phrase in, in Matthew, the greatest phrase in Matthew is the kingdom of heaven. The Lord was portrayed to them that it, and in the other gospels as the kingdom of God. But he used the phrase kingdom of heaven because he wanted to get across to his disciples and to the rest of the world, my kingdom is not of this earth. He's not the kingdom of the earth, not yet. That won't happen until he comes again. His kingdom is of heaven, okay? He rules from heaven, he rules with the power of heaven. Okay? So the Jews see Jesus as the Messiah that's still coming. When he does, he right on the wrong. The Christians are the ones that see the Messiah that's already come and is waiting until the day that he'll come again. Any questions? Y'all got all that, right? Y'all are brilliant people. Y'all are brilliant people. Okay. The third way that Jesus fulfilled the uh, Old Testament and the law and the prophets was through the pattern of Scripture. The pattern of Scripture. What do you mean by that? I mean this. The Bible is full of symbols. We know that. Anybody that's a Bible student at all, matter of fact, you ought to study symbolism in the Bible. It will, it will enlighten you and it will help you to divide the word of truth more rightly. For instance, we know that the Lamb is Jesus. All right. The ark was the ark of safety. The fig tree represents Israel. The Passover represented the blood. The Red Sea, according to Paul, represented baptism. Okay? And even circumcision represented baptism. So when Jesus came, he fulfilled all of these patterns. If they will just read their Bible and connect the dots, they will understand that Jesus is the Messiah. He's the Passover lamb that was talked about in Exodus when the children of God was delivered from Egypt. He's the serpent in the book of Numbers that Moses put on the pole. Who said that? Jesus said that. He said, I'm the serpent on the pole. Look in me and you shall live. He was Jonah in the belly of the whale. Right? He said, as I'm in the belly of the well for three days and three nights, I'm going to come forth. He was Hosea in the, in the love story of the unfaithful wife, right? All and over the Old Testament, the symbols of Jesus. The biggest one, save this one for last, is the shepherd. I am the shepherd, and you are my sheep. All of that symbolism. And he says, the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. And that directly connects the New Testament to the Old Testament. And it directly connects Jesus to the Old Testament. So again, he fulfilled the law by fulfilling the patterns or the symbols of Scripture. Any questions? Okay. The fourth one. Jesus fulfilled all the Psalms and all the poetry books. Every one of them. Again, I'm trying to teach you to write the divine word of truth. Okay? We know as we divide the Bible, there are five poetic books in the Old Testament. They're called the books of wisdom. Some of them call them the books of wisdom. They are Psalms, there's Proverbs, there's Ecclesiastes, there's Psalms, Solomon, and there's Job. Okay? In every one of them, Jesus is portrayed. And with that, we're going to look at some scripture. And I'm going to try to see it, show you that he is portrayed in these books. Remember, only in Matthew's gospel was the story of the Magi told. Now why? Representing Jesus as king. Come worship as king. So anyway, get your Bible. Let's turn to some scripture. These verses verify that Jesus was uh, who he said he was in uh, the Old Testament. Look at Psalm 61 1 right there. Most Bibles, all the Bibles, I guess, have these together. The poetic book, that is. 61 1. Let's turn over and read that together. And I 
just picked out a few. The woods is full of them. All the poetic books are full of them. Uh, I actually need to read verse 1 and 2. Hear my cry, O oh God, attend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. All right? Most of every Bible scholar that I know will read will tell you that rock is Jesus. He's the rock that's higher than anything else. And he's the rock that, he, that is, we are led to when everything else crashes around us. Okay? Just one example that the Psalms talks about Jesus. Now look over to Proverbs 30.
You know how I know where Job is in the Bible? It's, it's kind of crazy. I, don't, I couldn't tell you half of the number of questions that I always got right in school, but I always remember the ones that got wrong. And I remember having a test on the book of poetry and said, what book comes before song? I got it wrong. <laughs> but you see, I always remember now. If I got it right, I probably wouldn't even remember it. But the things you get wrong, you know, just kind of blossoms. And so I know that Job is right before song. Okay, Job 13. Matthew's gospel had a specific target 
and that was to present Jesus as king. Just like I said, he's the only one that talks about the Magi coming to worship the king. All right, any questions? You've only been tremendous students tonight. Will you, will you say the four things again in order that you did them? In order? Oh, my goodness. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll read them off to you, okay? I, yeah, okay, yeah, go okay. ahead. All right. How is Jesus, how did Jesus fulfill the Old Testament? Right. He fulfilled it in the principles of the law. Jesus was a good Jew, okay? He fulfilled it in the prophecies of the law, okay? That, uh, he was the one that would bruise Satan's head. Okay? Mm -hmm. He fulfilled in the patterns of Scripture or the law. Uh, he was all the symbols that we talked about. In the Old Testament, he was the uh, Jonah, he was the serpent on the pole, he was the Passover lamb, and so forth. And then he fulfilled the Psalms and the prophets or the books of poetry. He was symbolized in all those, all those books of poetry. Anybody else? All right, then let's go to our prayer list tonight, okay? Um, I have not ordered it yet, but I am going to be ordering a booklet called 40 Days of Prayer in Preparation for Revival. We will begin it sometime in March in preparation for our revival and asking everybody to participate. And that means 40 days. Not just Wednesday night, but we will use that as an opportunity to uh, maybe pray together for our upcoming revival. But as soon as I get them in hand, I will pass them out to the congregation. Anybody wants to use them in prayer. Uh, we were going to ask to remember Brother Robert Jumper. Uh, he has a lot of illnesses against him. He's a had heart transplant, many, many other surgeries had COVID on top of that. We just need to pray for our brother Ross tonight and the Lord will be upon him. Now, you told me, Harry, he's at home, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, <coughs> all right, so what do you have? Who do you have that we need to mention in prayer tonight? <coughs> uh, you gave me a name, didn't you? George Mr. Hoover? Yeah, Clyde Hoover. Clyde Hoover. Remember him in prayer. And I don't know if I can really have it. And now basically the story that he was telling me before church, he's the one that got and helped you find the Lord. Right. Yeah. My name was Whitney Crook. Now you do know anything that anybody ever tells me can be used in a sermon. You do know that, right? Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll use that. With or without your permission. <laughs> All right, Clyde Hoover, uh, Robert <coughs> Jumper. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. The family of Sam Bunch. That's my niece, Tracy's grandfather on her other side of the family. He did what? Sam Bunch, who passed away. Okay, all right. Well, let's remember this one. Sam Bunch. Sam Bunch. Yes, ma'am. 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 Yes, you don't know, put her on the prayer list, but if y'all would just remember Sammy, because she's just, everything's fine, but she's just been real, you know, overwhelmed and, you know, busy with school and trying to work at the same time, and it's just, you know, just a general prayer for her, if you would remember We that. will. We'll certainly lift up Sammy tonight. Okay. Sure Keep Stephen in your prayers. Um, he, like I said, I saw him last Friday, and he's got a, a urinary tract infection on top of everything else. He still has a long battle ahead of him. Otherwise, we don't know if he'll ever get to go home or not, but we are praying that he will. However, the downside of that, if he does return home, he may turn, come home in the long-term hospice. Uh, that's just the situation, the gravity of the situation. I uh, want you to pray for Millie. Uh, I've got her to con convince to stay in the nursing home, but a lot of things have to transpire. She's talking to the owner of her home, or the one that sold her home this week, 
Uh, he's given us time to get things out of her house. She's basically out of money at this point. Uh, she doesn't need money to live in the nursing home, but does have money for different things. Pay her insurance, pay her phone, sort of things like that. Get snacks and things like that. So anyway, long story short, we've got to find a way to sell her household goods. <coughs> um, and any advice or help anybody can give me on that, if the church could one day assist in that. I'm beyond getting hired and one person going down there moving the furniture out of the yard and have the yard sale. So if anybody can decide, you know, well, look, we'll all do it together, we'll all get together and do it, you know, maybe we need to do something to get all of her belongings out of her house and get it sold. So pray for that. It'll happen. Right now I don't know how, but it needs to happen. Uh, and by the way, while I'm thinking about it, how about let Tommy know that we need to get around when we can. Okay. It's, that's our wrap that it's at. It's out. Okay. Thank you. Are there anybody else? Let's, let's remember the family of Jack Hazel. Jack who? Jack Hazel. He wrote the Okay. Uh, he died. He passed away. Okay. Would you say Jack Hazel? Uh, he said, Jack Hazel, yeah, Hazel. Hazel. Keep our shut ins in your prayers. Keep our prayer list. And, uh, keep Sandy, uh, not Sandy, but Connie Maxwell in your home prayers. I talked to Sandy the other day who was over there. They still do not know the, de the destination of those children. We know that it's closing in the, in the school year, which is May, but they still don't know exactly where those children are in. So we really, really need to lift them up to them. The good thing is they've all made commitments to the Lord. So wherever they go, they can take the Lord. The children who come here, are that, is that all of the children that came to Sunday? No, that's all of our children. Are we the children of the church you're talking about? Uh, no, the kind of actual kids are on there too. Yeah, okay, I see that. That's, do you have a list in parentheses down there? Mm -hmm. Yes, basically that's all of them. Yeah. Now, a couple of them have already gone somewhere else, maybe back home. I don't know, but most of them, that's fine. I mean, I have some new ones that I haven't had that list in a while. Five of them are brothers and sisters, brother and four sisters. Now Adrian is not a he's not a Connie Maxwell child. He's down there. Benny Glover's not either. No. It's not all that is now, actually. I guess I'm not sure. It's Let's just see. those in parentheses. Yeah. It's not Matthew Ramsey and on down. I was asked to remember two people in prayer this week. Uh, one is unspoken. I ask you to pray for this couple. And the second one is, is a gentleman who uh, has a friend that's been uh, deported for two weeks left from their retirement before the retirement been deported overseas and uh, they have not heard. <coughs> so I ask you to pray that word will come back from her whereabouts. She is a medical doctor and word has not been heard in almost two weeks. <coughs> she could be in Syria. She could be in, in Poland. No one knows. But both of those are volatile places in my opinion. Uh, maybe not Poland but Ukraine. But she's a doctor. She may be, you know, performing this medical care or some of those people that are in Ukraine. So. Well, she can't let anybody know where she is. Because that's like a Christian. We now, don't know. We have no idea. In, back then, in the war zone. I know that. Know. But it's kind of anxious about the family folks that hadn't heard from her. Are there anyone else? Tell, uh, tell Bear, a friend of mine, uh, we were in Walmart today talking to Lisa, his nephew, I mean, niece one, 
And I had no idea we were good friends. And I had no idea he had passed, uh, his wife had passed away too. Who is so, this? Bear. T.L. Bear. His wife. T.L. Bear. Okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah, T.L. Yeah. Thank you. All right. We remember this one in prayer. Let's pause together for prayer. I'm going to open it up. If anybody would like to join us, we'll just have a season of prayer. And then if you have an opportunity to pray, I'll close. Father, again, we praise your name for being our friend, being our Lord, our leader and our guide, our comfort and our strength to an unsettled world. As we pause, Lord, at the end of this day for prayer, we will remember the names of the people that's been lifted up. But we thank you, Father, for extending seeds of revival, Lord, to our land, to the Methodist School of Ashbury. 
And we pray, Lord, that it will spread, Father, to our parts of the country, to the regions of America. Lord God, we're a broken society, and we need you like never before. War is at our door. People are dying every day, men, women, and children, Lord, are losing their lives because of the greed of other people. I ask you, Lord, to put an end to it. And I pray, Lord, that Christians will rise up and be the salt of the earth that you've called us to be. And I pray, Lord, that you will save this broken nation of ours. Turn us around, Lord Jesus, please. Now, Father, many names have been called tonight in different circumstances. Some have gone home. We lift those families up to you and ask you to remember them, Lord, in the loss. May they learn to depend on you. I pray, Father, for the ones that I've lifted up. Pray for this doctor. The word will come home, Lord, and comfort their family. And also, Lord, for the unspoken request that you will give me wisdom to minister to them. Lord Jesus, as we come together in our prayers, we ask you, Lord, to send a vow to our congregation. Help us, Lord Jesus, to keep our eyes fixed on you. Help our leaders, Lord, follow the Holy Spirit in all the decisions they make. And we pray, Lord, that you will be honored and glorified in this place. As we go from this place, take us, Lord, to our homes. Give us all a good night's rest. Bless everyone who's viewed us by way of Facebook. And thank you, Lord, for everyone, Father, that just takes the time to watch us online. And I ask you, Father, to help us meet again here in real or online, Father, Sunday morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray. God will bless you for sin. You are dismissed.